You're listening to The Luxury Item, the podcast on the business of luxury and the people and companies that are shaping the future of the luxury industry. Here's your host, Scott Kerr. After two years of navigating relentlessly choppy seas, the cruise industry, one of the sectors of tourism hardest hit by the pandemic, is forecasting significantly smoother sailing ahead. Following a 15-month-long pandemic lockdown, ships began sputtering forward from U.S. ports once again last summer, though not without setbacks. According to leading global cruise industry trade group Cruise Lines International Association, More than 75% of its member ships have returned to service, with almost all projected to be back in the water by late summer. And passenger numbers are expected to exceed pre-pandemic levels by the end of 2023. My guest on the luxury item is Lisa lutoff Perlow, president and CEO of Celebrity Cruises, a subsidiary of Royal Caribbean Group and one of the world's leading luxury cruise lines. One of the few American women leading a multi-billion dollar company, Lisa Ludoff Perlow is a dynamic business leader whose vision and strategy has propelled celebrity cruises to become the performance leader in the Royal Caribbean Cruises Group portfolio. Her record-breaking results in industry firsts have earned her reputation as a trailblazer in the complex maritime industry. Appointed president and CEO in 2014, Lutoff Perlow leads the multi-billion dollar brand with 13 ships sailing to 300 plus global ports worldwide. She also leads Royal Caribbean Cruises Global Maritime Organization, ensuring that the corporation's fleet of 59 ships run safely, smoothly, and efficiently across all RCL brands. Welcome to the luxury item, Lisa. Thank you, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, thank you for joining me. I think a good place to start to sort of kick things off is with a very brief snapshot of Celebrity Cruises. Certainly, we have 15 ships. We sail all over the world. Um, Our brand is a relaxed luxury brand for the culturally curious. Um, Anybody who sails with Celebrity travels a long way to go to the amazing destinations that we visit, and we provide a a relaxing and luxurious vacation filled with... um, wonderful culinary experiences and really immersive destination experiences in all the great places that we visit. What are the key selling points? Like when you differentiate versus some of your competitors, like what do you lead with as your key selling point? Luxury resorts at sea is really, or relaxed luxury (laughs) resorts at sea is, is really how we define ourselves. But our brand is built on, first of all, a foundation of purpose where we, you know, we care about the important things in the world and, and, you know, diversity and inclusion and our crew is from over 70 different countries and we've done done a lot around gender equality and we, um, you know, we have a lot of things going on around protecting our environment and continuing to do that in a meaningful way but from our from an experiential perspective, Scott, we focus on five things. Culinary is probably our strongest pillar. Um, We uh, continue to win great awards for our culinary experiences. We have over 32 restaurants and uh, and bars on board our ships. And so so the offering is is pretty comprehensive. And we also have wellness as a pillar. Uh, So spa and just how we make people feel on board and and, you know, what people are looking for in their vacation is, is ha- all happens under our wellness pillar. Design is a critically important pillar of our brand. Destination, um, as I had just said, is also really important uh, based on where people want to go. It's the number one reason that they book vacations. And then, of course, our award winning service is also one of them. So you position yourself as a luxury cruise line. What is a luxury cruise line in, in your definition? Well, again, I, you know, I, I really try to make sure I qualify it because we're not ultra luxury. It's not, you know, one arm behind your back, white glove, um, stoic service. Our ships are not tiny or small. You know, we really, I really stay on the relaxed side of luxury. We've done a lot of research about what people are looking for. Luxury has a different meaning today than it did before. It's more simple. It's approachable. Uh, it's welcoming. And I think those are the things that we care about the most at Celebrity. And of course, these resorts and anybody that takes the time to go do a little research on our brand and see these magnificent ships, you can see the very high design that we uh, put into our ships and the types of world renowned designers that we partner with, you know, ever since we've taken this approach to 
how our resorts look. They happen to float, but they're still beautiful resorts. We're getting a lot of attention from um, hospitality, interior publications, Architectural Digest, all of the different places that focus on design that historically have never focused on cruise ship design. And who is your typical passenger? And does it vary by ship? No, um, I, our guest is pretty uh, consistent in terms of the things that they care about. We don't, we don't think so much about age. It's not important. It's really mindset. What do they want? Um, and what do they care about? And do we deliver that? We, we look at culinary, again, foodies are um, our customers. Uh, people who care about lovely design are our customers. And people who care about immersion, history, culture are also our customers. And I would say those are the three things. Um, and looking for a relaxing vacation, again, wellness is just becoming more and more important. So I would, I would say that is our customer. We are um, on, on the relaxed side of luxury. So it's, uh, you know, it's a, a, a higher wealth uh, guest that we're appealing to as well. But that also goes along with the fact that our ships are all over the world and people have to travel to them. So, so we, we err on the side of more affluence as it relates to vacations and also the cruise industry. So on May 26, 2021, you tweeted, someday is here, which mm -hmm. essentially greenlighted the much anticipated restart of cruises with passengers. And Celebrity Cruises was the first cruise line to sail out of the US port with paying passengers. Uh, I think it was the Celebrity Edge departed from Fort Lauderdale in June for a cruise to the Caribbean. So after that 881 day pause, that must have been an incredibly exciting day. Oh, man, I, I don't even know how to describe it, Scott. It was something we had been waiting for for so long. You know, you know better than anyone. We were out of service for a very long period of time. We were the most significantly part, most significantly impacted part of the hospitality sector. Right. Um, we were dealing with governments and, and our own here in the United States, CDC. And that day was really special and I'll never forget it. It was Celebrity Edge under the command of Captain Kate McHugh. And my team came to me as we were planning, uh, as we knew we were gonna be the first to come back. And I'm sure you can imagine, that's both exhilarating and scary. Coming out of the time we were coming out of, the whole industry was riding on us doing it well. And that was a huge burden for us. Um, but we had so much confidence in everything that we had thought through and everything that we had done, and the amazing team I get to work with every day. And I remember our head of PR coming to me and saying, every, anybody who's anybody in the press and in the media wants to be on that ship. And she looked at me and she said, are we okay to do that? And I remember thinking to myself, okay, this could be a huge win or this could be a big disaster. Right. But because of the confidence I had in that team, the crew on board and all the things that we were doing, I remember looking at her and saying, bring it on. And we did. And oh my goodness, it was not only a wonderful day, but it was just the press we got. And, you know, honestly, at that time, the media was looking for a good story. They wanted a happy ending. And uh, we were so excited that we were able to do that and give them that. And it all worked out beautifully. And so, yeah, as I think back on the last two, two and a half years, that was a, that was a really special day. So how did you and your team spend those 16 months while you were shut down? You know, when you talk to a lot of companies and I asked the same question to other CEOs, uh, what they were doing, they were shut down. And a lot of the answers were they got to rethink about their business. They spent time rethinking their business and retooling. In many cases, they had to obviously accelerate their digital capabilities. What were you and your team doing during those 16 months? I would say the same, but what I would say that's different about our, our brand, celebrity, and our team is that our industry wasn't necessarily thinking about that. Our industry and probably CEOs of the different brands within our industry were just thinking about when is this going to end? When are we going to come back? Are we ever going to come back? I, as a CEO of a brand within an industry that was disproportionately hurt because of this pandemic, I mean, think about it. You're not generating any revenue for 15 months. Who would have ever thought you'd be in that right. situation? 
and you've got a team of people who aren't in the office, they're not only spread out all over the place, maybe the country, depending on what department you worked in, but also all over the world because our crew was home in all of these countries wondering when they were going to be able to get back to work and provide for their families. And so you're sitting there as a CEO and you're saying to yourself, I need to keep this team energized, motivated, inspired, confident. They have to believe, you know, that this is going to end and we're going to come back and we're going to come back stronger than ever. So what I did, probably unlike the other CEOs in our industry, is I really said, let's take a step step back and let's look at this to our and, and use this time to our advantage. And our chairman at the time, Richard, he he would always say to us, uh, he would quote Winston Churchill, "Never let a good crisis go to waste." Mm -hmm. And so I would say that to the team, we're not going to let this crisis go to waste. When is when did we ever have the opportunity to just pause and breathe? and say, when we come out of this, what do we want to be? Who do we want to be? We want our brand to be stronger. We want the comeback to be stronger than the setback. And so how do we think about all of the ways we're going to improve our brand, our experience, our business? And, so, and we got to work. And, um, and, that's, and that's what we did. And, and when we did come out of the pandemic, you know, we had a stronger digital experience for our guests because so many people are now doing everything. You know, again, it was based on necessity, but now it's just what people want to do and how they want to engage in technology and, and how they want to book with us and how they want to engage with our brand. We came up with all included pricing because again, luxury guests want simplicity. They want ease. They want to be able to book everything at once. They don't want to worry about just booking the cruise and then all the components of it. We strengthened our air program. We strengthened, we now have a hotel program with our ship. So we really use the time to rethink our business, rethink our brand, strengthen our luxury positioning, um, and give people the things that they've, you know, that they've always told us they wanted, but we might not have had the time uh, to think about up until we were shut down. And during the cruise shutdown, it seems the CDC took more of an adversarial approach to the cruise lines. What was it like working with the CDC and its position with cruises throughout the pandemic? I, I would imagine very frustrating. <laughs> Well, listen, of course, you know, you, you, you want to get back in business and they're like, they're like, no way in hell are you get back into business. So yeah, it was a right. little, it was, it was a little tough for a certain amount of time. But as I always, as I thought about it, you know, if you think about what happened to the world, not just the industry and the CDC, I mean, this thing was, nobody understood it. Uh, I, I think it was easy to, and I, you know, I, I use the word easy. And I'm hoping that, you know, don't misinterpret that right. it was easy to it was easy to shut us down. Right. Because, you know, there were ships making headlines and we were we were probably the poster child or the easy target. And I think the CDC, you know, in fairness, they were like, what is this thing? What are we going to do? How are we going to control it? Well, at the end of the day, you're not going to control it just by shutting down one industry. And we all see that this thing has just lives on and on and on. And it's a very difficult thing to control. And, you know, there was no vaccine at the time and all these health organizations around the world were like, what are we going to do? How are we going to, you know, people were dying. Hospitals were full. ICUs were full. It was such an awful time. And so in retrospect and in hindsight, as I think about it, and I think about what the CDC did to the industry sure it's like how could you do this to us and you know and you know we're not we didn't cause this and you know we're we're you know shutting us down isn't going to stop it but i also understand kind of what they were thinking and you know they had so little control i think they looked at us as the one thing they could control and um and and you know it, it happened as it happened and it took a long time for anybody to reconsider and and think about allowing us to come back into service under very stringent guidelines and requirements um, that were also difficult to fulfill. But what you know, what's great about this industry is we rallied uh, and we did talk to them and they did talk to us and they you know, it might have been quite restrictive, but at least they gave us a path forward. And that's the thing that we needed. We needed a path forward and we needed to prove we could do this. And we needed to come back into business. And so, you know, we just negotiated and worked really hard. And, you know, uh, 
we had a healthy sale panel put together. Many of the people that participated in that healthy sale panel were ex CDC, FDA, Health and Human Services. So we, you know, we had a lot of credibility going in and saying, let us go back into business. And these are the things that we'll do, work with us. And, you know, eventually they did. And over time, you know, there, there's still a lot of requirements if you want to be in the conditional sale order. But over time, it's, it's evolved. It's gotten a little better. It's gotten a little easier. And I believe, you know, in the not too distant future, it will, it will continue to get much easier. Because I think one of the things that everyone realizes is we're just going to live with this forever and everyone's okay with that. And we're all protecting ourselves to the highest degree possible. And it seems the industry is finally steaming ahead after over, you know, a year at bay. The world has reopened, occupancy limits have relaxed, and bookings are at or above pre-pandemic levels. You know, I've been reading that experts are essentially forecasting a significant rise in occupancy rates across all major cruise lines this year. How is it looking for celebrity cruises so far? The same. Um, you know, we keep seeing our occupancy grow and grow and grow. I really do believe that the, the, the limitations right now are not... We have not uh, imposed any limitations and mode factors. We can see that people just want to live their lives. Um, all of our guests are vaccinated. You know, people who travel internationally usually are. You're protecting yourself to the highest degree, degree possible. You have to be vaccinated to get on board right now. And people just want to live their lives. And the only, I think the thing that helped us a lot as well as an industry isn't even the restriction on the cruise industry, but the restriction that the US had where if you're coming back to the US, even if you're vaccinated and an American citizen, you have to test negative. So I think right. <laughs> part of those things were, you know, just the fact that we're an international destination and people might've been reluctant to take that plane ride across the pond and then run the risk of, you know, testing positive wasn't their concern. It was having to stay an extra 10 days or however long you had to, uh, you had to test. So or, or uh, wait before you could come back. And now as you see that restriction lifting, we're seeing even more business. So again, um, business is, is, is good. Uh, we see the long-term prospect as uh, very bright. A lot of advanced bookings for people who really want to get back and cruise and see the world. And so just like uh, the situation you described in the industry, celebrities is, is seeing the same thing for our brand um, and our guests. Now we're seeing these high levels of inflation, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and high interest rates are already pinching and already cost conscious consumer. Are you seeing any demand for cruise vacations softening in terms of these advanced bookings, any patterns over the past month or so? We have not, listen, our costs have changed, right? Fuel costs are up and, you know, we, we drive these ships all over the world. Um, so for us, uh, that's different than other hospitality or hotels when you, you know, when you have to buy fuel, you know, the airline industry and, and the cruise industry are certainly feeling the impact of higher fuel rates. Food inflation, I mean, we're feeling it again on the cost side just because dairy proteins, those costs are quite high right now. So costs to operate um, have been impacted. You know, we joke, it's like, we just get one headwind after another. But, you know, what I always think we're like that. Uh, when Remember when you were a kid, you had those clowns with the rounded bottoms and somebody just kept punching the clown, but the yes. clown kept coming back up. That's how we feel. That's, you know, we say that every day, you know, they're going to throw as much at us as we can, but we're going to, you know, we're going to get through this. Um, I, and I do think it really depends on the brand. I think it depends on the travel destination. Some people are impacted more than others in terms of, you know, how this impacts their vacation decisions you know, for, for brands on the more luxury end of the sector, you could be impacted by portfolio, but the higher you up on the, are up on the, you know, on the luxury scale, probably not. So it, I think it really depends. I have not seen a significant change or impact yet. And I'm hoping that, you know, some of this calms down and eases, but, um, but so far, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're feeling okay, even though there's, there's some headwinds out there and um, that we're hoping that isn't the next thing that might impact us. So I don't have to tell you that brand loyalty is key to the cruise industry. What percentage of your business comes from repeat cruisers and how do you keep them loyal to the brand? Uh, well, you know, you, you're right. Loyalty for all of us is really important. And I, and I you know, I, I know that you've 
you know, there have been many wonderful brands that you've spoken to and CEOs of luxury brands that you've spoken to. And regardless of the brand, people coming back and engaging with your brand, whether it's a, a cruise or, or a hotel or a piece of jewelry or a restaurant, um, you know, the, these people coming back is, is critically important to all of us. About half of our guests right now are repeat loyal guests. Um, about 25% of them are new to cruise and about 25% of them um, have been have cruised before, but they're the first time to celebrity and we, you know, we like other brands, we continue to, to monitor the landscape of loyalty and what matters most to people. I think first and foremost, how we deliver our experience is the things is the thing that keeps our, our customers and our guests most loyal to our brand. A big indicator of that for us is we have what we call future cruise um, consultants on board our ships. And what is that? So, so while our guests are on board, they have the opportunity to meet with um, a group of people, our future cruise consultants, and book their next celebrity cruise while they're on their current cruise. And as I continue to see that business grow and grow and grow, and I see our ships exceeding all the targets that we give for them to you know, encourage our guests to book their next cruise before they leave the one they're on. You know, you know that your brand is doing well, you know that your experience is delivering and that people are emotionally connected to your brand. And I know there are lots of different things that you can do to incentivize people from a from a financial perspective. And some people use discounts, points, dollars, rewards. But I, you know, I think recognition and delivering an amazing experience are the, the most powerful things that we can do. And we continue to evolve and enhance our loyalty program um, in that way. We have, you know, our industry, our brand has, has extremely high engagement by our loyal guests. Um, and, you know, we just continue to try to increase our penetration of those guests and also the frequency by which they sail with us and also making sure they stay loyal to us and and um, and when they choose their next cruise it's always it's always on celebrity and it's probably pretty easy to get the cruise fans back to the high seas has it been difficult to attract those new to cruise consumers and you know what's your marketing approach to targeting these consumers you know when we were going through what we were going through just before we had to shut down and uh, you know the the headlines wouldn't stop uh, you know we we believed as an industry that our loyal guests were going to come back and they couldn't wait to get back and they really couldn't um, that that's very true and we also said you know it might be it might take us a little time to get new to cruise to come and i think one of the things that we saw was that when we did open up and when we did open up with the fences around the experience i think we got more um, we got more new to cruise than we expected because cruising then was looked at as like the safest place they could go because it was the only place you knew you were going to be around people that were fully vaccinated, where social distancing was being practiced, um, and, and you couldn't go anywhere else uh, and, and get that same experience or those same, you know, or the, the same health protocols that, that we ended up implementing when we opened back up. So in some ways, it really helped us bring first to cruise into the category faster than we thought. We always look at sizing our market. We look at who our customer is. We, we had a little bit of a conversation earlier about who that customer is. We look at where are they? We, um, and, and you know, what do they care about? And, um, and then where do we find them? And we also need to make sure, you know, we do a lot of research on cruise rejectors, but there are a lot of people who are still, you know, as we, as we scan the universe and look at people who are open to cruising, those numbers are coming back. When we first, you know, 15 months ago, it was terrible. But now when you, we do all the research on people that are open to cruising, the numbers are, are pre, at pre-pandemic levels. So we still believe there is a lot of opportunity. And so what we do is we size that opportunity in that market based on our position uh, for our brand and the type of, of mindset that we're trying to attract. So I, I do believe that we will continue to bring new to cruise uh, into our brand at historic levels. And so, um, and our marketing message is really about relaxed luxury, resorts at sea, culturally curious. And there are a lot of those people out there that are looking for that type of vacation. 
What are you seeing in terms of onboard spending? Are you seeing a boost in spending in areas like more spa treatments or they're investing in specialty dining or retail, or casino play? What type of trends are you seeing in terms of onboard spending? So, you know, uh, Scott, we talk about that a lot because post-pandemic, it's really been interesting to see the behavior of people as they're re-engaging with the world and re-engaging re with our brand and taking vacations again. They're really treating themselves in every way. Um, when you look at even the type of accommodations they're buying, they're buying, you know, all of the top space, all of the suites are, and, and our retreat experience, which again, is a really luxurious experience. Our retreat and sort of the accommodations of the suites, how they're designed, uh, the restaurant, the resort deck for, or the retreat sun deck, the lounge, everybody's loving these spaces. They're treating themselves. They're being more indulgent than they used to be in the type of stateroom they're buying. Yes, they're getting on board. The spas are doing really well. People's reconnection with themselves and their well-being is really important to them right now. So they're engaging a lot with the spa. They're going on shore excursions. They're eating in the specialty restaurants. They're doing everything on board to a much greater degree than they even did pre-pandemic. And I think people have been waiting for this time to treat themselves again. And, um, and they're enjoying their vacations now probably more than they ever have. Cruising historically has been thought of as something for an, either an older population or a family with kids. And we're seeing major cruise operators making big updates to the onboard cruise experience to target younger audiences. What is Celebrity Cruises doing to get more of a high net worth millennials to cruise? Well, you know, it's funny because every there are different segments within the generations, right? So um, there are some millennials that won't care about celebrity because they don't care about the types of ships that we have, where we go in the world, the type of experience that we offer. So you have a, a group of ships uh, or brands that really focus on high energy, you know, go-kart tracks, bowling alleys, water slides. Um, and, you know, for some families, that's really important. I can't say that we don't look at generations because generations are, you know, are important in how you talk to people. Mm -hmm. So you might talk to a certain generation, but that doesn't mean that's the only generation that you're going to get. And the other thing is, is it doesn't mean everybody within that generation is going to sail with you. When we look at millennials, one of the interesting things that we found about millennials is that they disproportionately spend on travel. You might not be buying houses, they might not have a car, um, you know, they might not be in a high wealth category because their careers are just starting, but boy, do they want to see the world. And there's a certain segment of those people who really want to see the world, who care about their foodies, you know, they're culturally curious, they want to stay in a, in a lovely resort, not just, you know, backpacking through Europe. And so as we just think about the types of experiences that we offer, um, we just continue to update them, um, appeal to a, a, a younger perspective, and at the same time, don't alienate the guests that are already cruising with us. And I think that's like, I, I think that's the secret formula for a brand. You know, you want to ensure that you keep the people that are important to you as you grow. And our brand is, you know. Next year, our brand will be 27% larger. We'll carry 27% more people than we did in 2019, which is the full year you know, before the pandemic. So we have to continue to grow our market in a really significant way. We might have lost some people along the way. Um, so we have to replace those. And then we have to find a lot more guests over, over the next few years to sail with us. So that's why we partner with uh, designers like Nate Berkus and Kelly Hoppin and Joanne Moncou and why we partner with Gwyneth Paltrow for our, you know, for our wellness experience, why we have a Danielle Baloud restaurant on board. You know, we just keep validating our, the things that we care about and the experience we provide with the people of the mindset that we believe want to sail with us. And they span all the generations, technology and how we improve our technology experience on board and how we make it easy for people to book on their, on their phone or, you know, on their iPad or, or on their laptop. And we, we really want to make sure that we are doing the things that are important for different generations who again are like-minded and, and will really enjoy a celebrity cruise. A few years ago, you launched Celebrity Edge Ship. 
it was Celebrity Cruise's first new vessel in a pretty long time. And you said that Celebrity Edge would, quote unquote, redefine and elevate how the brand was going to be perceived and transformed by this particular new build. How was the approach to designing and building this ship a complete departure for the brand? In every single way, I think, really, it's... um... To your point of it, it was a it was quite a while before we introduced a new ship. I think it was 10 years between um, when Celebrity Edge was introduced in 2018 um, and when we uh, launched uh, the, the first Solstice class back in 2008. We hadn't designed a ship or redesigned a ship in a very long period of time because the Solstice class was pretty much a five ship series that was uh, introduced over time. And it was really fun for me because I've been in my current role for almost, let's see, uh, late 2014. So in my eighth year in this role, but when I came to Celebrity, I had the opportunity to really think about the Edge series and what it could do for Celebrity and even what it could do for the industry. And this, this series of ships, for everything that, we aspired these ships to be and do for celebrity. It has over delivered on every level, um, financially, perception wise, opened uh, people's eyes to cruising, got, got our ships into places where cruise ships have never been before. We talked about Forbes, we talked about architectural digest, hospitality interiors. We attracted designers who never would have worked with the cruise industry before. People even like Danielle Ballou because of this series of ships. We've opened up our brand in such a meaningful way. And we were able to break into this relaxed luxury space because I have been, I've been in this industry for uh, 38 years. And everybody says you, the cruise industry can't do luxury at scale. And my ambition was to prove them wrong. And we have. You know, when you look at Vegas and you think of some of these wind properties in Vegas, they've done luxury at scale. And so, you know, my mission has been to disprove that theory and, um, and create our own form of luxury. You know, it's really lovely to see that our brand is a category of one. And so it's, yes, it's transformed our brand. It's transformed the industry. You know, everybody's chasing Celebrity Edge and how they do that in terms of, you know, competitors in the industry. And, you know, they won't because we started a long time ago and we keep getting better and better with every new delivery. And um, so I think everything that we knew about the industry, everything we knew about the brand, everything we knew about consumers who wanted something different was was truly accomplished through this uh beautiful series of ships that I'm, I don't know, you know, if they'll ever be replicated. So shortly after you resume cruising, Celebrity Cruises launched its biggest ever global advertising campaign, Journey Safe, Journey Wonderful, F-U-L-L and Wonderful. Really an amazing campaign. Um, the center of the campaign is, is television spots that focus on, you know, these many precious moments that we've missed during the pandemic. Can you talk about the thinking behind this powerful campaign? Well, you know, it was, um, as we've been talking about, it had been a while since we even were out in the market because it wasn't the right time, right? You have to, you know, there, you have these unique opportunities and you have these unique moments in time where you're able to tap into an emotional connection with people for a, a certain reason. And as we were thinking about the fact that it was time, you know, we needed, we needed to get back out there. We, we needed to stop being on the defensive. You know, it was almost like our coming out party, our coming back party. And we also didn't want to appear tone deaf that people weren't also worried about certain things. So we took the opportunity to combine these two powerful emotions that we wanted to address through this campaign. One was, will I be safe? And the other was, I really wanna get back. I I really wanna start engaging with the world again. So the visuals combined with the song, I mean, it was like, I don't know, it was this perfect storm of everything that worked. And it was also an opportunity because when you're, you know, our journey through the world and our journey through life 
And again, I'm going to go back to our culturally curious, which is a big part of who we are as a brand. We're not going to take you on three and four night cruises to the Bahamas with all due respect to ships that do that. We want our guests want to engage with the world and the world is full of people who don't look like them um, and and who, you know, don't maybe come from the same backgrounds as they do, practice the same religion as they do. And our guests love that. They love that experience. And so by re-engaging with the world, you're going to start re-engaging with people that might not look like you. And, and that's good. That's what you like. And that's what you want to do. And so we took the opportunity to put together this campaign that really tapped into all of those things that our guests care about and all of those emotional things they were going through and the fact that they really wanted to, to get back out there. And so I agree with you that for me is, will probably go down as my favorite campaign ever. So was it part of a bigger, larger brand refresh? No, it honestly was to capture a moment in time and position our brand in the way that we felt was appropriate, like the journey the journey of the world and the journey of engaging with all types of people, which is what makes traveling so special and coming out of a pandemic. And we knew it was gonna be for a very short period of time for a very specific reason. And after we felt like it was time to move on from that, we got back to just celebrating what we do and how wonderful our vacation is. Um, and, it, and it went, it got much more energetic. Uh, the, the music is much different. Uh, the visuals support it, safe has gone away. It really was to capture a moment in time. But but our our brand, our messaging and our campaign really evolved from that and, and pivoted uh, quickly. Yeah, I, I've seen that. The new spot seems to focus more on the amenities available on your ships. You know, you're talking about tapping into uh, Chef Ballou for his first, uh, first on-the-sea restaurant. You partnered with Gwyneth Paltrow for the wellness retreat at sea. And it just seems... It's not, not, it's not only celebrity cruises, but um, all your competitors, it, it seems that it's kind of turned out to be an all out amenities arms race with, with each other. Is that the case? It depends on the amenity. You know, when we were talking a, a few minutes ago, I was talking about, you know, what are some brands focus on? And they, they uh, maybe the adrenaline, the adventure, the features. For us, it's all about the experiences. And strengthening our pillars so people truly understand what our experience focuses on and does that hit a chord with them that that's what they're looking for. So again, you know, we talked about what are the things that celebrity focuses on? Well, we're a foodie brand. The godfather of the culinary world is Danielle Balloud, who also happens to be a very good friend and mentor of our head of culinary operations. Cornelius Gallagher. Hmm. And so when Cornelius came to work with us, Danielle said, well, if Cornelius is going to work with a cruise brand, that I should, you know, that brand must be really good because Cornelius was a chef in six, three Michelin star restaurants. And when he was the chef, a restaurant received, the, that restaurant received a Michelin star. So, you know, he keeps really, you know, good company. And and so as we continue to think about what are the features that we offer, they're very experiential and every single one of them goes through a filter of, is this going to build on a brand pillar that's really important to us? And so while, you know, while you might say it's sort of an amenities arms race, I think, I think in some ways, if you're, you know, competing in a certain category against each other, you might you might choose different things, but in, in our case, it's really just all about continuing to elevate our experience, continue to solidify our position in this relaxed luxury space and continue to build our brand pillars. So we keep attracting the people who are like-minded who, who care about the vacation experience that we offer. We're not trying to be everything to everybody. So the brands that are competing on, you know, go-kart tracks are also, competing on their sweet experience. It's like, you know what? It, it's like, I celebrity has picked a lane and that's the lane we're swimming in. So what are some of the big cruise trends that you're seeing? I've seen things like luxury expedition voyages where people are wanting to stare away from crowded destinations and visiting ports of call that are further removed from the masses and likely somewhere they've never been before. What, what other cruise trends are you seeing? 
I'll go, I'll go back to wellness because I really think that's a that's a hospitality trend. I think it's one of the it's one of the things that we tapped into before um, the time that we've just all lived through, and it's become even more important now. So I would say that that's a big one, and that's sort of why we're leaning into that, and why we also take a look at all of our spa experiences every time we build a ship, and all of our culinary experiences, and just sort of that mind, body, and soul uh, programming that we put together. We have our women in wellness program. That's something that's really critically important to us, and that's something that is a really big consumer trend. I think as it relates to destination, we always think about the destination in in tr you know, trying to understand what are the place, where are the places that people really want to go. To the point that you just mentioned, I do think that I do think expedition cruising is probably right now at an all-time high in terms of what people want to do now that again we're coming out of this time. And I think that's really going to grow. We're not really we're not in the expedition space other than our ship in the Galapagos, our beautiful celebrity floor, which just which holds a hundred people. It's it's almost like a, a beautiful luxurious yacht and then you're you're cruising through this most magnificent one of the most magnificent bucket list destinations in the world and and our Galapagos product seems you know continues to do amazingly well but one of the features that we're seeing and one of the things that we're very focused on is destination not so much in really small small places that we go but how we deliver that because there's two things that are going on in the consumer's mind one is when I go someplace I really want to see it deeply and if I go back a second time, I want to go further into the destination and maybe experience some things that I haven't before. So we're we're looking at smaller, much smaller tours all the way to private two by two or family of 10, however, however you want to do that. We're looking at how we can put together a comprehensive destination experience and offer destinations in a much more differentiated way than other ships even our size do. I think sustainability continues to be a trend that consumers are thinking about and the world is thinking about. So we continue to up our game in sustainability, the Celebrity Edge series, for example, um, and we've gone back to our entire fleet to do this, 90% of guests single use plastics um, that historically um, are on ships, we've eliminated. Uh, we have our uh, emissions purification, wastewater purification. We're exploring alternative fuels. We spend a lot of time thinking about diversity and doing social good and giving back to communities. And I think these are the things that, these are the trends that I see all over the world and also things that consumers are, are most concerned about and thinking about and wanting in either brands or vacations. And those are the things that we're tapping into. So Lisa, my final question is the luxury item question, which I ask all my guests. So if you were stranded on a deserted island and you can only have one luxury item with you, what would that luxury item be? It can't be any form of air transportation to get you off the island. And unfortunately, no water transportation, no celebrity vessels can pick you up or anything that requires mobile service so you can call somebody to get you off that island. It's just you a lot of sand, palm trees surrounded by miles and miles and miles of water. What would that one luxury item be that you would like to have? My bed with my two puppies in it. <laughs> what kind of dogs? <laughs> what kind of puppies do you have? My little Shih Tzus. My, my little Shih Tzus named Tom and Brady. Tom don't, and Brady. Uh, don't, I'm, I'm going to put two and two together here. <laughs> You certainly can. Um, and yes, and you'd be correct. Um, and don't tell my husband. I said my bed with my two puppies. I won't. Lisa Ludolf Perlo, president and CEO of Celebrity Cruises. Thank you so much for joining me on The Luxury Item. Oh, Scott, it was an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Um, thank you so very, very much. That's it for this episode of The Luxury Item Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this useful and entertaining, I would be really grateful if you can share it with a friend or colleague. I would love it if you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps other listeners find us. The Luxury Item Podcast is a production of Silvertone Consulting. I'm your host, Scott Kerr. Until next time.